Did you know we have the Boy Scouts to thank for barcodes? As a kid, N. Joseph Woodland learned Morse code through his participation in the Scouts. This childhood experience would later inspire a revolutionary idea. Years later, when Woodland was searching for a way to efficiently imprint data onto products for tracking an organization, he thought back to Morse code. He wondered if there was a way to visually render its simple but virtually limitless method of communication. Teaming up with his friend, Bernard Silver, Woodland turned this moment of insight into the precursor to modern barcodes. In 1949, they submitted a patent for the first barcode, which described using pairs of lines to represent numbers, a concept still in use today. Interestingly, their initial patent didn't include the vertical lines we associate with barcodes today. Instead, it featured a series of concentric circles resembling a bullseye. Despite their groundbreaking idea, Woodland and Silver struggled to gain interest from companies. Their fortunes began to change in 1960 when engineer Theodore H. Maiman built the first working laser. This technology made it possible to quickly decode a barcode's patterning, marking a significant advancement in barcode technology. By 1967, the railroad industry adopted the world's first official barcode system, CarTrack, to identify rail cars. However, the system, which used multicolored lines, faced accuracy issues and was eventually phased out in the 1970s. Although CarTrack was the first barcode system to be officially adopted by an industry, its multicolored design is now just a footnote in history. Around the same time, the grocery industry began experimenting with different types of barcode symbols, including the original bullseye barcode, a sun-shaped symbol from Carecon, and a fan symbol from Lytton. Realizing the need for a standardized system, the grocery industry formed a committee in 1971 to develop an industry-wide data standard and choose a universal barcode symbol. This led to the creation of the Universal Product Code, UPC. The RCA submission was an early leader among the seven finalists. The bullseye barcode, after all, was the original barcode symbol, and RCA was a powerful company that had invested significant resources in developing the technology. RCA's main competitor was a latecomer to the battle for barcode dominance, the IBM symbol invented in the early 1970s by George Lohrer. Between 1971 and 1973, the committee extensively tested the seven finalists, listened to pitches from each company, and met multiple times to discuss the path forward. Throughout the process, RCA and IBM remained the front runners. In a somewhat ironic twist, Joseph Woodland, the father of the barcode and inventor of the bullseye symbol, advocated for the IBM symbol over his own invention. Realizing their symbol might not be selected, RCA began to pressure the committee and threatened to pull out of the barcode industry altogether if their bullseye was not chosen as the standard. The committee's deadline to select a symbol was March 1973, and the decision went down to the wire. In its final meeting, the committee chose the IBM symbol, despite concerns that, to quote the historian Stephen Brown, by opting for the oversquare symbol instead of the bullseye, the committee may have dramatically slowed the pace of implementation because of RCA's pressure. The IBM symbol became the industry standard, and the very first universal product code barcode was scanned at a grocery store in Troy, Ohio, on June 26, 1974. Remarkably, the IBM symbol the committee chose is still going strong almost 50 years later. The barcodes you scan at a grocery store are essentially the same barcodes someone would have scanned in the 1970s. Based on meeting notes from the symbol selection meetings, committee members felt they were doing important work, but even in their wildest dreams, they could not have imagined how consequential their decision ended up being. But the design that changed the world came remarkably close to being a forgotten piece of history. If a few grocery executives had voted a different way, we might be moving through a world filled with bullseyes.